Good morning, gentlemen and Kylie. Here we are building upon or continuing what we worked on yesterday in the product rules. So are you to this place in your yes. your packet? So I want you to do problem one. We'll just kind of go through these today. We may just get up to the quotient rule today, so we may be just doing these four problems today. I'm not, sh I'm not sure how far we'll get. So, uh, so on this one here, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, so we have a product essentially of two functions, and so if we have uh, one, if we put as 5x cubed, our first derivative of that's going to be, was it 15x squared, or something like that? Does that look right? And if we get sine x here, what is this going to be here? Cosine x. So our answer is going to be the sum of the product of these things here. So we get 5x squared cosine x plus 15x cubed, excuse me. I got that wrong. Cubed, there we go, cosine x plus 15x squared sine x. And then we have a common factor, it looks at 5x squared. So we get x cosine x plus 3 sine x. Does that look right? Does that, does that look right? Yes. Okay. So that would be number one. I want you to look at number two, which is a table type problem, which is similar to one we worked yesterday. Mm -hmm. So I want you to work on this one. If you kind of struggle with this a little bit, I recommend you kind of turn back to another similar problem we worked on yesterday for some some guidance, okay?
Okay, for this one here, is, is everybody finished with this one? No? Yeah, okay. What I'm, what I'm seeing here is we want the slope of this tangent line and if m of x is negative 2 h of x, p of x, so we have like the product of two functions is what it amounts to. So one way to, to do this is the way I've, I've been doing this, we've been doing this since the beginning of class, which is this business right here. Now in this case they gave us a little slight complication in that whatever the product of these two functions, we have to do what? We have to multiply by negative two. So whatever we get here is going to be multiplied by negative two. Does that sound right? So p of negative three is four, and p prime of negative three is one fifth. And then h of negative three is two, and h prime of negative three is negative two thirds. So uh, what we have here is m prime, we want to find the slope, right? m prime of negative three, which is going to be the slope of the tangent line, is going to be negative two times, I'm going to get, uh, it's going to be four times negative two thirds. My pen is going a little glitchy on me. Uh, and it's going to be plus two times one fifth. So I get, uh, we get negative two times, I'm getting negative eight thirds, is that what that is? Plus two fifths. And really what we do here is we go back into, <laughs> we go back into a much earlier incarnation of your academic career now, don't we? And we can simplify this further. Do you want to simplify it? Did you simplify it? You did? Um, you get fifteenths, right? So you get negative two times negative forty fifteenths? Is that what that is? Multiply by five. So negative forty fifteenths, is that right? Plus six fifteenths. So we get negative two times negative thirty-four fifteenths. Do those numbers look familiar at all? They don't? Are they wrong? Oh yes, they do. Boy, I was confused. Yeah, because yeah, you're taking, to turn this into fifteenths, you got to multiply the numerator and denominator by five, right? And to get this into 15, you've got to multiply the numerator and denominator by 3. And so you come up with this. So I'm going to get uh, 68 15. Does that sound right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Again, we're going back to, uh, once we get to this point here, we're going back to 7th grade or earlier mathematics, right? Which can be fun. I had an uncle once who, when I told him that I was a calculus teacher, he correctly reminded me that everything before calculus is pre-calculus. Well, kindergarten math, that's before calculus, that's pre-calculus. So I want you to, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> You did you, in kindergarten. You didn't know what you eventually to get into, did you? No, I wish I did. <laughs> and you said, "No, I'm not going to go with that direction." All right, why don't you go to do number three? Yeah. He 
realize in these exercise sets they're mixing up the vocabulary a little bit. The, the, the D, the X, the, the slope of the tangent line, and now instantaneous rate of change. So my, uh, my creators, my friends who are creators of the curriculum, they, uh, they had a, a plan in mind, didn't they? Do you actually know who made this? Yeah, uh, I do. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the story about that after we get over this. It's kind of it's kind of a good story. Not a good story. Yeah. I've got a There was a, there was a teacher out there in Irving School District. Her name is Stacy McMullen. And Stacy, what she did is that she came across an idea of how to teach calculus from going to one of these teacher seminars where there was what they called a notebook system, because we have these note cards, right? Well, the person who actually invented it had an actual stack of note cards that were connected by one of those, those metal rings. You've seen those, right? Mm -hmm. And you could flip over these things. And she modified it to make these figurative note cards in the form of the curriculum, similar to the way we're seeing it here. So it's called a note card system. And it's something when she left the Irving School District and went over to Dallas Independent School District, she brought that with her and she started out as a calculus teacher in, um, I think she went to, um, I think she went to Ada, no, she, she went to South Oak Cliff High School in Oak Cliff, Dallas. Okay. And uh, the students were at quite a, quite a low cognitive level. They were in an inner city school and all that. But she was able to, to work with those students. There was another co-teacher with her. Um, Miss Mays. Anyway, they worked together and they ended up getting these these inner city kids actually passing the AP test, like with a three or something like that, which is really amazing. And so this is a real, this is a teacher, the district noticed that and said this is a teacher who really has something that could help the students of the district. So eventually she got uh, they hired her to really work with the AP curriculum and calculus and she eventually recruited three others or they came into so they had her and three others that were mentors within the Dallas Independent School District and so the one that I worked with her name was Tracy Etheridge who was one of these four mentors who were trained and that Stacy worked with and so uh, what, what had, Tracy worked with me for a couple of years and sort of being my co-teacher when I was over at Wilmer Hutchins. And so I got familiar with the note card system and I've, and Tracy changed this a little bit. So Tracy, what Tracy's wrinkle on this is Tracy brought up this spiraling thing. Like we're going back through the product rule the second time. And also I've been since, I've gone to a training AP training session by Stacy and with it because what happens these these seminars we go to for AP training they're updated every year as, as the test the AP test changes the idea is that you're trained to actually pass it I think I think you guys could probably do pretty well on the AP test if you were taking it so anyway that, that's the story yes speaking of testing I'm um, almost done with my um, pilot's lessons oh really I um, took the written test on Saturday and passed that, and my um, final like check ride almost like same when you go take your driver test and ride with you in your car to show you do it. Oh, okay. Like, same concept. I have that on um, April sixth, I believe. Okay. So you like Monday or Tuesday. All right. So that's something to look forward to. Something to look forward to. It's really good in life to have something to look forward to. It took over a year because of COVID, but... Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. 
So let's let's go do this. Let's go do this instantaneous rate of change here. So s prime of t is equal to I'm getting what is that going to be? Eight t. Eight t. I don't know why I put a two there. Eight t. And we'll have minus two cosine t, right? So that's it, isn't it? And so uh, S prime, which is the instantaneous rate, oh, at, I'm going to put at uh, negative pi over 2. And that's going to be equal to uh, negative, let's see, 8 times negative pi over 2. That's going to be negative 4 pi, is that right? And we have minus 2, and the cosine of that is going to be 0. So our answer is going to be negative 4 pi, is that right? That's what you got? Okay. There we go. Okay, let's go to the next one. Find the equation of the line normal to g of x equals 3x minus 2 cosine x at x equals pi. Have you worked on this one already? You have? Anybody else? Work on it. Let me give you a couple minutes on this. What happens in, when it comes to things like this, sometimes the, the pi value will sort of throw people off a little bit if you're not used to it. Okay. Are are you finished? Oh, you're taking a break. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. I hope it's going well for you guys. It's all right. I was just gonna ask, what does it mean by when it's saying like it's constant? Say like k is constant. It's a number. It's just a number. Like this number, case. Right? In this case, it's a number like, like that. Okay. Like x would be a constant, which is pi. Yeah. Or a, a number. So k is a number. Right. What that means. That's not giving any way any uh, college board secrets, is it? All right. I think it is. I think you just cheated. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like they did, and they're asking something about retroactive. Yeah. So so they may have done they may have done one of the math sections. They got to do the other one still. There's a calculator one and no calculator. Yeah, the first one they do is a non-calculator yeah, section. I think, I think it's Then the last one. So they're getting ready to do the last section, which is going to be a 50 mo 55 minute section. Yeah. 55 minute section? You should take that quick review. I personally hate the SAT so much. Oh, did you? I love okay. It. Anyway, here, here we are. The line normal. Well, the first thing, to find a, a line, we need what do we need? That, what, what did Gavin used to say in this class? We need a what? We need a point and a slope. That's one thing that Gavin was really good at. Okay. But no, but that's that's a good thing because that's an important thing. So anyway, we got to plug in. So so g of pi is going to be three pi uh, minus 
two, and what's going to be the cosine? Let's put cosine of pi. You know, what's the cosine of pi? Negative one. So what that means, we got g of pi. I'm saying that's going to be three pi plus two, right? Because that's negative negative one. So three pi plus two. Which is really, I mean, isn't that kind of weird for a coordinate value? It's just very, it's just very awkward looking, is what it is. But that's what it is, right? And now we want to find our first derivative. So g g prime of x is going to be is that going to be three? And then we have what's our derivative of negative two cosine? It's going to be plus. 2 sine, right? Mm -hmm. 2 sine x. And so g prime of pi is going to be 3 plus, what's the sine of, of pi? What's the sine of pi? Uh, it is zero. So this is going to be, that's going to be it, right? So that's going to be m of t, but we want to find the the normal, what's going to be our normal one? So that's going to be m of n is going to be um, negative one-third. One so slope m sub n equals negative one-third. So what's this weird looking uh, equation going to be? It's going to be y minus 3 pi. It, here's what I'll do for this one. I'll just go ahead and put this in parentheses like this. That makes it a little neater. To me it does. And they got negative one-third times x minus pi. So that should be it. Is that what you got for that? Yeah. Pretty good. Well, I, I want to talk about it. We could. I just want to. I just want to talk. Just look at it. Just just briefly here. We won't even work any problems here. Yeah, we're going to work it tomorrow. But basically, it's uh, when you have a a quotient of two functions, and we had the quotient rule song, which is. Loady, 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 high. Oh, loady, loady, loady. Minus hidey, hidey, low. All over low square. Oh, I was able to hit the note. Anyway, we'll work on that tomorrow.